there's no going back. I can't unsee all the things that I've seen. I can't unfeel all the things that I've felt. It's 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 been life changing, not just because of everything that I've learned, but everything that I've experienced. I am always so afraid of being seen. That's something that makes me want to hide. But this is just making me want to come out. Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I am coming at you in today's video with a question from one of my viewers. And I love this question because I get it a lot. I think a lot of people who have lost loved ones have this question. This one comes from Sherry Haynes. And Sherry says, I've been trying to get through to my loved ones that have passed, but I feel like I'm getting nowhere. Does that usually happen that way? What I think Sherry is really saying is, hey, I've lost somebody and I keep talking to them or I keep trying to interact with them, but crickets. I don't know if they can hear me. I don't know what they're doing. I'm getting nothing back. Is this normal? And the first thing I would say to that is, yes, it's actually quite normal. For sure. Because once a person passes, they are going through a lot. And some spirits go through even more than the average spirit. And we talked about this in a previous video, like they're doing the life review. They're going through what I call climatization. They're getting restored. They're getting acclimated to the frequency of the new dimensional landscape. They're also being introduced to different tiers within that landscape. So just know that a departed loved one is awfully busy as soon as they pass. They're going through a lot. And that's a timeless space. 5D is timeless. And so what may take them a couple of weeks in their perception to get through might be four years or 10 years in 3D time in our life. And so, yes, it is normal that they do whatever they need to do over there before they even remember <laughs> that they might want to come back and visit their daughter or visit their friend. And still other souls, like my dad, <laughs> like my dad, he got there, he passed in 1995, he got there and he was almost like, peace out. I did earth, I did that whole thing. I wanna just be here right now. I wanna experience this. I wanna focus on building in this dimension. I wanna focus on creating and that's what he did. He really didn't have a ton of interest in anything that he left behind. And guess what? That's his prerogative. Now, did that hurt me a little bit because there were many years actually that I would try to reach out to my dad and talk to my dad and I'd even go to psychics and mediums hoping to hear from my dad and I would hear nothing and I would wonder like, well, why? Like, does he not want to talk to me anymore? I mean, is, is he okay? Is he somewhere else? Like I would get very confused, but over time I just released any expectation about what I needed him to do and I just trusted that he was where he was supposed to be. And interestingly, after many years, my father started to show up in small ways at first. And this is very key because one thing you need to understand, Sherry and everybody else, is that it takes a lot of energy. And truly, it takes a lot of sophistication for a discarnate human being to materialize or crystallize in physical form. You see, they have to, they have to modify their frequency, which is now 5D. Their light body is in 5D. They've got to modify their frequency to accommodate 3D, our frequency, and then they have to blend their frequency with ours, our space, and also us, the beingness of who we are, body, mind, and spirit. They have to do a lot to even give us an impression of their presence. And that's the first thing my father did with me many years after he passed. Well, Correction. He came to me in a dream about a month after he passed, but that but after that, that was it. I didn't hear anything for many years until that first, that first evidence. And that evidence was so subtle. If I hadn't been paying attention, I would have missed it. And isn't that the case for all of spiritual um, evidences and phenomenon and the messages from spirit? I truly believe we're always getting messages from spirit from our angels, from our higher self, but we're missing these because we are not paying attention. And had I not been paying attention that day, I would have missed the subtle presence of my father. He visited me. 
And we all know what our people feel like, don't we? Like, I know what my husband feels like. I know what his energy is. I know when he's in a room, I can feel that. I also know what my animals feel like and my child feels like. We know what our people feel like. And I sensed him that day. I said, oh, feels like my dad. There was just a different quality of energy around me. And I stopped. I created a space for it and I interacted with it. And see, I always say this is so important. Whenever there is any kind of spiritual evidence in your environment, you always want to take a beat, notice it, acknowledge it, and interact with it. You see, when we do this, we encourage spirit to continue to give us these evidences. And so in that moment, I stopped and I interacted with the presence of my father. I said hello and I and I communicated. Now, did I receive a message back? No, because in that moment, that was the most my father could do. Now, over time, he progressed from kind of the sense of himself into actually fooling with electronics. He started flicking the lights or he started uh, turning on my ceiling fan, which was accompanied with that sense of energy, like my familiar recognition of my father's frequency. And from that, he graduated to very gentle apparitions, uh, very mild apparitions. Now, this appeared kind of out of the corner of my eye in sort of a shadowy, almost smoky, kind of misty-like substance with the accompanying sense of my father's presence. And I will say this because it's interesting and important. When a spirit, especially a human spirit, is attempting to physicalize in our environment, they do so in stages and phases. And the first phase of this is to appear to us in shadow or to appear to us in sort of a misty substance. Because it's shadow, or because it's sometimes dark, people tend to think evil or bad, when really it's just the evolutionary process of materialization. It's just one of the phases they have to go through before they can become a full-blown apparition. And if we have a really fearful response, like, oh my God, it's a ghost, it's a shadow being, I'm scared. Well, then they're a, little, a lot less likely to try it again. So just so you know, and for that matter, a spirit trying to materialize is not the same thing as a shadow person or as a hat man shadow being. That's a class of being that has nothing to do with discarnate entities. So just, just so that you know. So my father managed to figure out while he's tripping the matrix of physicalization, he managed to figure out how to become kind of a shadowy, misty apparition. And I noticed it and I communicated with it from there. And then I think the last thing he did in a physical way was uh, project his voice. I was alone in my house and I was walking through the dining room into the living room and I heard just as clear as day stop me right in my tracks. Hey, how you doing? In his kind of deep, bassy kind of voice, a voice I hadn't heard in over two decades, but I immediately recognized that it was my dad. I stopped, created a space for that encounter and interacted with it. And so I say all of this to you, Sherry, and everyone else to demonstrate just kind of what the process looks like. We're talking 25 years later, and it's still quite a feat for my departed loved one to physicalize in any real way. It's much easier for him to communicate with me in the dream landscape or through the imaginal mind. And let's talk about this, okay? Because I really want to encourage you, Sherry, to try to have your encounters here in the imaginal mind. What does that mean? It means the imagination. And so much spiritual work is done in the imagination. And so many spiritual messages comes, come through the function of the imagination. Why? Because it's non-physical and therefore easier for non-physical entities to interact with us. The biggest problem for us with this is that because it's non-physical, and because it's happening within the construct of our consciousness, us, we think, oh, that's just my imagination. That's not real. That's not happening. Well, I'm here to tell you that what happens in your imagination is just as real as what happens in the physical. Your imagination is real. 
And if you enter the landscape of the imagination with the intention to have an encounter with your departed loved one, like you hold that intention and then you open up the space of the imagination through meditation, letting all other thoughts fall away, creating a sacred chamber for that interaction, your departed loved one will enter. It's easier for them to do it. They don't have to flip the lights. They don't have to throw their voice. They don't have to physicalize as an apparition. They can walk right into that imaginal encounter and have an experience with you. I encourage you to meet your departed loved ones there. And also, you can use the imaginal plane to meet any departed person. If you want to have an encounter with Buddha or have an encounter with Jesus, or have an encounter with Nikola Tesla, you can enter into the imaginal plane and open up that space with your intention, and you can meet them there. This is a powerful technique to utilize. But yes, so that was the long version. Yes, it's normal to not hear much, if anything at all. I have friends who've lost people years ago and still haven't had a visitation dream, and they wonder why. Is it something with them? No. The soul is, is sovereign. <laughs> the soul is in 5D, having experiences, maybe graduating to 6D, maybe checking out 7D and 8D and all that's going on. There. The soul is, is having its experience. And when it wishes, it will come back to visit us. But until then, we can continue. We can continue to communicate with them. And let me leave us with that. Anytime you feel love in your heart and you think upon your departed loved one and you speak to them from the space of that, they hear you directly and evidentially. Does it show up wherever they are? They hear you. When we have love in our heart, we activate the very real portal of our heart. And this is kind of like a wormhole that allows us to travel to whatever dimensional space in which they exist. Open the heart. Think about your father or your mother or your departed loved one. Think of them and feel that love for them. That creates an immediate channel from you in the physical to them wherever they are. And then with the portal open, tell them whatever you want to tell them. And I guarantee you, irrespective of whether you hear anything back immediately or see an apparition or have an evidence, they hear you. They feel you every single time. It's kind of hard being left behind, isn't it? We're left to wonder what's daddy doing? What's mama doing? Are they together? Are they happy? We wonder from this vantage point, but we don't need to worry and we can continue to talk with them. They will hear us and we can visit them in the plane of the imaginal mind. Can I get an amen? We got to spend more time there. All right, everybody, on that note, it was fun talking to you today. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Please like, please comment, please share, because that helps this channel. I'm being disappeared by YouTube with the algorithms and the shadow bannings and all that stuff. I need your help to keep this channel alive. And until next time, please know that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys.